Ladies and gentlemen, we have the four horsemen of the apocalypse. They have gone out in our Hebrew coaching manuscript. So we're going to show that with you. We're going to let you see all the details behind it that we have discovered since putting out our chapter six walkthrough study of the Hebrew coaching revelation. And with us, we have our Hebrew grammarian, Janice Baca. Janice is going to help us parse through these little minute details of the four horsemen and we're going to compare them to the English and the Greek and we're going to see there's some nuances and we're going to see some Hebrew markers and we're also going to learn a little bit more that has been uncovered through the process of looking at the Hebrew. So let's say hey to Janice Baca. Shalom, shalom, Brian. Well, I tell you, we have something exciting today, and I've said it many times before, Brian and I have only been shown in part of the mysteries. We have one of our viewers from Finland. Her name is Johannes, and we'll show her information in a minute. Johannes found something very significant about the four horses that go out. These are one of the findings that I find extremely exciting because these are the keys that connect us to the Tanakh, the Old Testament. And in that, we now may actually have a fuller picture of what is going on in the end of days. Okay, without any more delay, I think we need to show them what has been found in the Cochin Hebrew Revelation, the Scroll of Mysteries. So Brian, what we're looking at is chapter six. Now I know we've already released chapter six, but we had to come back to show you the significant findings of the four horses of Revelation. This is exactly what we're looking for as Hebrew markers in the Hebrew Revelation. This is what should be found. So I'll read this for you. And I saw the lamb open one of the seals, and I heard the four living creatures say as one voice, come and see. And when the second seal was opened, I heard the second living creature say, come and see. Then I saw a white horse, and he who sat upon him had a bow in his hand and a crown given to him. And he proceeded to prevail and be victorious. Then another went out, a red horse. Sitting on it was authorized to take peace from the earth, and he was given a great sword. Then when the third seal was opened, the third living creature said, come and see. And I saw a black horse and one sitting on it with a set of scales in his hand. Then I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures say, a measure of wheat for two faces, three measures of barley for two faces, but the oil and the wine do not injure. And when the fourth seal opened, I heard the fourth living creature say, come and see. Then I saw a strong and mottled horse, which in Hebrew is Ometz, Barad, Sus. And the one who sat upon him was named the messenger of death, and Ge Gehinom went after him. He was given authority to cause a death to a fourth of the upon the earth with sword, hunger, and death by the living creatures of the earth. And when he opened the fifth, I saw beneath or at the foot, of the holy place, the souls that were killed for the holy name and for the sake of their testimony. This, of course, is Revelation 6, 1 through 8. So in the order we have, Brian, we have the white horse, the red horse, the black horse, and the mottled or speckled horse, okay? And this is extremely important. The words are omets and barad. Now, when you compare this to other Hebrew Revelation uh, manuscripts, you have the Freiburg HS314, and I've said this many times, that is a direct, almost word-for-word -word translation from Greek to Hebrew. You've got the same thing with Hazon, which is Greek to Hebrew, and of course, Paris 131. Like I've said before, the Paris 131 manuscript, Hebrew manuscript, is a translation from the Greek, but a very awkward manuscript in their translation. They made it very much. They changed and modified things to whatever they felt like doing. Of course, they created this one to be a lime green horse. 
Then, of course, when you look at the Crawford Aramaic, you have the green or the pale horse, which again matches the Greek, which Greek, of course, is solid green. So we have all of this, these manuscripts that do not have anything about a speckled or strong or mottled horse. So let's look and see where we may have something similar to this. Let me read this in Zechariah 6. And I lifted up my eyes again, and I saw four chariots coming from between two mountains, and the mountains were mountains of bronze. With the first chariot were red horses, and with the second chariot, black horses, and with the third chariot, white horses, and with the fourth chariot, strong speckled horses. So I responded and said to the messenger who was speaking to me, what are these, my master? And the messenger answered and said to me, these are four spirits of the heavens coming forth from presenting themselves before the master of all the earth. The one with the black horses is going out to the land of the north and the white ones have gone out after them. And the speckled ones have gone out to the land of the south and the strong ones went out eager to go to walk to and fro in the earth. And he said, go walk to and fro in the earth. So they walked to and fro in the earth. So we have a different order here, but look at the colors of the horses, the red horses, the black horses, the white horses. And guess what? We've got the strong speckled model horses. But of course, this is now in the plural form, amutsim, whereas the singular is omets. And then, of course, you have the mottled or speckled, berudim, which, of course, in the singular form is barad. We have what appears to be the same horses that are in and described in Zechariah 6. Brian, could this be describing perhaps the same horses of Revelation and perhaps give us a fuller vision of what is expected during the end times and what where the direction that they may be going what are your thoughts on this it's certainly possible it's amazing to see that they are the same colors this is making a hebrew marker showing that these two are paired up meaning when john was seeing his vision and writing it down it was matching what's found in the tanakh the old testament and so those are the types of markers that would prove to be from a original hebrew source and the more markers you find the more you have evidence to support a claim such as that to see the same colors and to have directions is pretty amazing and it's certainly possible that our four horsemen of the book of revelation will go these routes they don't have to but it's certainly possible we also can't exclude the possibility that this is a type and shadow. We know types and shadows are cyclical in the Hebrew. They point forward in time to things being fulfilled in the future. For example, like Jonah and the fish, we also have Yeshua being in the grave three days and three nights. There are many of these types and shadows. This could be a possible type and shadow that the four horsemen were going to show up in the future and also just for a clarification it says they're they're chariots so that would explain why they're plural here whereas our four horsemen are singular horses going out with a rider but it's truly amazing to see something like this this adds more impact and more power behind our revelation that we have from coach in india I'll say this, though, it's important to remember that horses are symbolic. And especially if you think back to when Yeshua, Jesus, comes riding into Jerusalem, he comes riding on a donkey. Well, when a king approaches a city, his message to the city is all dependent upon what he's riding on. If he's riding on a horse, he's coming to conquer. He's coming for warfare. If he's riding on a donkey, he's coming with peace. He's coming not to attack, not to be aggressive. So that's important to note that these horses, in both these cases, are coming with aggression. And so we know that 
not good things are going to happen here. But Absolutely. it's beautiful to see that our Hebrew coaching is unique and there's none that we've found so far that matches up with the Old Testament. That's powerful. That is powerful. And one of the things that Johannes had brought up, and it makes perfect sense, is that the the rider of the white horse has only one crown. And many like to say, well, that's Yeshua coming on this, this horse, the white horse. However, Yeshua has many crowns. And so this is the distinct feature that says, no, it probably is not Yeshua on the white horse. And I think this has caused quite a stir, but we need to be aware that there are some things that we've been taught along the way in our churches or synagogues or wherever we come from, we've been taught incorrectly. And we need to look for the truth in the scriptures and be willing to accept whatever it is that the Father is showing us in his scriptures and walk in that according to that word. And, and also to go further with that, using a Greek manuscript, Greek is very flat and it opens the door for theories and interpretations and sometimes links that shouldn't be linked up. But what we have learned and experienced while studying these Hebrew manuscripts from Coach in India is that the the depth of the hebrew is clear and precise and meaningful and it closes the door on a lot of these theories and a lot of these doctrinal beliefs and that's just one of the symptoms that people are just gonna have to deal with when they come in contact with our information you either accept it or you you know just ignore it which you know a lot of scholarly world will ignore this at first but eventually it'll catch up to them and that's just something that's going to happen. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's what happens when you're in the tip of the spear and you're learning information that nobody else has put their hands on first. You're going to discover new things. And, and we said from the beginning of this study, there's going to be a lot of doctrinal beliefs that are just going to fall away to the wayside or be proven to be inaccurate. I agree, Brian. And and of course, you know, you made a very valid point about Greek. You you just simply you have to uh, find a way, so to speak, to make it work with the Tanakh. And unfortunately, some crazy things have come out of these uh, methods of trying to connect that uh, the Greek form of the New Testament to the Tanakh, the Old Testament. But here we don't have to do that. We're, we're really uh, excited to see that we can match word for word. So this is a pretty significant find. So to summarize, we've got the horses of Revelation appear to be the same horses of Zechariah. That's what it appears to be. So take notice that these could very well be the same horses that are described in Zechariah 6. Although it is interesting, they are described in a different order. But we do have in Zechariah, the black horses going to the north, the white horses going after them. The mottled and strong horses are going to and fro. The, the strong ones are actually going down to the south. So it looks like now our mottled and speckled horse, that one, he possibly is the one and only that goes to and fro. I don't know. It's just a theory. But what do you think about this, Brian? Well, I just want to jump in and point out that when you look at the Greek and English, you will see a green pale horse. And some people will say sickly horse. And they'll translate that to be a sickly pale horse with, with diseases attached to it. However, in Zechariah, it's a strong muddled horse. And in Cochin Revelation, it is strong modeled. These horses are strong. You can't mm -hmm. make the case that they are sick and weakly and their bones are showing or anything like that. No, they're strong. And that is a unique marker that that is unlike any other manuscript that we've found. Absolutely. And so this is where we this these are the type of findings that raises our antenna to say we've got something pretty significant. And we need to pay attention. I think we all need to pay attention. I know that there is more here than meets the eye. Brian and I have only been shown in part. And this is the reason why it's extremely important that we hear from you, the viewers, because you will find the things that Brian and I may not have found. We are only shown in part. 
this is the reason why this is an all hands on deck, so to speak, to look for those things that are revealed in this coaching revelation, the scroll of mysteries. Look at Johannes's comment. She says the rider on the white horse can't be Yeshua because he's the one breaking the seals. That's another good point. And additionally, the Antichrist has one crown, as I said earlier, and Yeshua has many crowns. Again, I want to say thank you to Johannes from Fenland. She is one of our faithful viewers and to all of you who continue to follow us and watch the unveiling and the unfolding of the scroll of mysteries. These are the things we're looking for. These are the things that will give us a better understanding of what's coming in these end of days. But we couldn't do it without you. This is a learning process. We have put all this work in to get it out to you, but we are also all studying and learning this all together. And so our viewers are part of the process. You are part of the tip of the spear. You are part of this history making moment where we are text criticism and analyzing and comparing these manuscripts to the coach in Hebrew manuscript. And we're opening and unlocking doors that we didn't even know there was doors to. So thank you, the, the viewer. Thank you. And I thank you all for watching and following us and helping us to uncover these mysteries. It's only going to get better from here. Bless you all.